You are composed of cells, lots and lots of cells. Each of your cells contains DNA, which is its instruction manual. If you are exposed to things that cause cancer, so are your cells. If you lay in the sun, your skin cells get burned. If you smoke cigarettes, your lung cells get their nicotine fix. Exposure of cells to carcinogens can damage their DNA. Sometimes when cells divide, DNA can be damaged just through bad luck. Damage to DNA is usually repaired, but sometimes it isn't. When damaged DNA goes unrepaired, the cell receives bad instruction and can turn from a healthy cell to a cancer cell. Cancer cells divide too fast, crowd out other cells, and grow where they are not supposed to grow. When cancer cells cling together, they form a tumor that might be found by a doctor or a patient. Today, most patients with cancer are treated based on what a piece of the tumor looks like when viewed under a microscope. This is how oncologists have done it for 50 years, and while this approach has been better than nothing, it doesn't work that well. Even if the doctors agree what type of cancer a patient has, it is not always clear what is the best therapy to treat the patient's cancer. Recently, it has become clear that the cancer cell's DNA, its instruction manual, determines how it will behave. In particular, it determines if it will grow quickly or slowly, if it will respond to one type of therapy or another, and if it will be cured or come back. Given that the cancer's DNA is so important in determining how it will behave, doctors and scientists at the UNC Leinberger Comprehensive Cancer Center have decided to treat patients based on their and their tumor's DNA. This approach relies on new DNA sequencing technology called Massively Parallel Sequencing, or Next Generation Sequencing, and so we call the Leinberger effort UNSeq. Here is how it works. A patient with cancer comes to UNC and agrees to participate in our study. Some normal DNA is taken from the patient, usually their blood, and some DNA is collected from the tumor. Both the tumor and normal DNA are broken into smaller pieces, and then the important pieces of DNA are captured. This capturing is important so that we don't have to sequence all of a patient's DNA, just the DNA which is important in cancer. It is like going into a gigantic library and choosing the one book on cancer and ignoring all the other books on eye color or heart size or height. The captured DNA from the tumor and the normal tissue are then processed using next-generation sequencing. After sequencing, we have two gigantic books of DNA sequence. One is the tumor's DNA, and the other is the patient's normal DNA. Although the captured DNA is much smaller than the patient's entire genetic sequence, each book is still several million letters long. The tumor DNA book and the normal DNA book are then compared, letter by letter. In most places, the books are the same, but in a few places, the letters of the books are different. These differences represent mutations in the tumor DNA that resulted from DNA damage. Finding all the mutations involves a lot of math, but eventually, UNSeq identifies all the mutations that are present in the cancer cell and not in the normal DNA. Just having a list of the mutations is not the end, however. Only a small number of the mutations actually change what the cancer cells do. Most mutations are harmless. Whether a mutation is good or bad largely depends on what gene it affects and what part of the gene it affects. Once the list of mutations has been identified, a team of doctors sits down together and reviews the mutations at the Molecular Pathology Tumor Board, or the MTB. Each mutation is reviewed. Some mutations are clearly innocent. Some mutations are clearly bad. For some mutations, it is unclear if they are important, and the MTB is not always certain what to do with these. This is all done by doctors who are not directly involved in the patient's care, so that similar decisions are made for patients with the same kind of cancer. Once the bad mutations have been found, they are confirmed by another clinically approved test. Information about the mutations that are confirmed is then given to the patient and their treating doctors. With this knowledge, the patient's care can be more tailored and focused. The doctor may decide to try a different therapy. The doctor may decide the patient has a better or worse likelihood of recovery. Sometimes the DNA suggests the type of tumor is different from what it looked like under the microscope. New treatment plans based on DNA sequencing are called targeted therapy. 
Importantly, UNSeq does not put patients at risk. If there's a good therapy for their cancer, they get that therapy. UNSeq only changes care for patients who do not have any good options left. Unfortunately, that is a common problem for cancer patients. Someday soon, we believe all cancer treatment will be targeted, that is, based on an analysis of the tumor DNA, rather than on what the tumor looks like under the microscope. Doctors at UNC recognize that technology moves at a rapid pace, but applying new technology to patients can be slow for patients with advanced cancer. Having successfully implemented UNSeq, UNC physicians are building on the approach to develop a range of advanced tests for patient care. We believe these new approaches will help patients with cancer to live longer and better lives.